Hey everybody, WYSIWYG101 here. I am doing a video response to Mr. GA Arms on Target giveaway. He's giving away some great, great optics. I highly recommend that you go and check them out. I will put a link down in the description. Go check them out. Um, what he's asking is uh, where we stand on the current uh, gun control issues and uh, um, what legislation would we go with, what legislation would we approve of, or if we don't agree with any of the, the current legislation that's uh, coming up to say so and why. So it's kind of a complicated issue, sir. Um, I do have some thoughts, though, of what I, would, uh, what I would suggest, what I would agree to. And I think that they're good ones. I think that they're sensible ones. I know there's going to be some people that disagree with me, uh, feel free to disagree with me. I, I, I don't mind at all, uh, but I really think that these are some good, sensible, uh, sensible things that uh, that could happen. Um, first off, I think that if you buy a gun, if you want to buy a gun, especially for first timers, then you should requ be required first to um, take a one-day class and that involves safety. It involves carrying and loading of the firearms. Um, with uh, with also going to the range and shooting shooting about 50 rounds um, so that they know how and they get taught how to shoot proper stance and everything else and uh, some storage options um, it doesn't have to be a requirement to do proper storage options but just so that they have an idea of what those storage options uh, are consist of you know like the uh, biometric safes the safes that ha have a code full size big safes you know uh, but something like that this card would be good for four or five years before it has to be renewed so that the next time that they go to buy a gun they just show the card boom there it is and uh, you know they can buy the gun um, I think that's a good idea I, I, I always have uh, I, I wish that I'd gone through safety courses and stuff like that and I probably should have but uh, I chose not to spend the money. But if it's a mandate, I would have. Um, as far as uh, the background checks, I think that the background checks should be uh, a little deeper and more intensive. I think that if you really want a gun and you fill out the paperwork and it gets sent in, that it automatically unlocks a, a gate, if you will, a door, and you waive your HIPAA rights to privacy on your mental health. That's what I feel. That's what I think. Um, and I think that uh, if something happened, like let's say that uh, five years ago my mom passed away and my psychiatrist or school counselor said, put some notation in my file um, that I shouldn't, you know, be trusted with a firearm or whatever at that time, that that should be revisited so that it could be subject to review. Um, so... I really think that there there can be some checks and balances in this in this idea, but again, if you're if you want a gun bad enough, you should be willing to waive your 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 HIPAA rights in that regard in that regard only. Um, I think that if you want to get your concealed handgun license or CCW or whatever they call it in your state, that you should have to take a two day intensive defensive tactical handgun course, or tactical defensive handgun course, whichever you want to put those words. Um, I think the card, once you get your CHL, should be good for, um, you know, four or four or five years, and then it's subject to renewal for, and, and they could change the uh, option on the, uh, the requirements to like a one-day course or a half-a-day course if you're renewing. But I think that the, I mean, if you're carrying concealed, you're carrying for one reason and one reason only, and that is to protect yourself, to protect your family and those around you. Um, and uh, there's no telling how somebody's going to act or perform whenever the adrenaline is, is rushing through them, uh, their blood's pumping, their heart's pumping, their lungs are pumping, everything's a pumping, you know, and, uh, and I think that this would be um, uh, a a good way to to mitigate that is to go through a course like this every so often but I think it should be a requirement at least 
to get your CHL. I plan on taking one as soon as I possibly can once I get my CHL. So, you know, there it is. Uh, I think that the, they should tighten up the gun show loophole. What that loophole is, is that if you go to a gun show and there's, say, 70 tables, um, 50 of those tables could be taken up with uh, FFL dealers. And the FFL dealers are required by law to submit you to a background check. Um, however, the other 20 tables, of those 20 tables, let's say 15 of those, are private individuals selling guns. Um, I think that the gun show, in order to operate, should have an FFL dealer of some sort, somebody who's licensed, on site at a table, willing to make those calls and, and do those background checks for a nominal fee and for those for those private owners. So they come, they show up, you go to their table, you want to buy a grand from them, they take you over to the, the FFL dealer, he runs you through the paperwork, boom, you're you're good to go, you go back, you buy the grant. Um, and then that way the uh, the so-called gun show loophole, uh, that part of it will be closed. The other part of the, the gun show loophole is private individuals walking around ready to sell their firearms. Uh, they could avail themselves of that service, um, but there's no requirement for them to do so. However, I think that if you want to do it on site, then they should have to do that, and that would uh, that would mitigate that whole loophole thing. And lastly, I think that there should be stiffer sentencing for crimes involving a firearm. Um, like say, if you rob a convenience store, you have a gun. Um, the time that's tacked on could be one to five years. I think that maybe it should be accelerated to, uh, I don't know, maybe five to ten years. Something that's going to make people, make criminals think twice about uh, about doing it. Um, you know, and that's just one example. There are many, many others. And uh, I just think that it, there should be stiffer sentencing involved. Do I think that uh, AR-15s and the so-called uh, assault rifles um, or assault weapons should be banned? No, I don't. Uh, do I think that standard capacity magazines or what they call large capacity, high capacity magazines should be banned? No, I don't. First off, it only takes a few seconds to change out magazines. That's it. There's not much that can be done in a few seconds. Um, as far as AR-15s and AK-47s, if you look at the statistics between 2010 and 2011, more people were killed with clubs than were killed with these weapons. And actually, it's not these weapons, it's rifles overall. So who knows how many uh, actual uh, homicides or murders were caused or, or, or anything with those type of weapons. Uh, it's significantly less than 392. So I really think that uh, um, there should be no ban involved of a particular weapon. I think it's just the government wanting to control us and try and force us to not be able to have one. That's all I think. So, oh, and they look scary. Oh, no, it's a scary, scary gun. So, anyways, Mr. J.A. Arms, I hope that that answers your, your question adequately. I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, so, with that, thank you very much. Uh, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Stay safe and shoot straight.